this meeting, right? My apologies for that. Right, so let me tell you a little bit about the University of Bedfordshire now. How many of you before, and you could raise your hands in the chat, in the chat that we have here, never heard about the University of Bedfordshire before, and you're wondering, well, what kind of university is this? I never hear about them. They don't even have a premiership football side, right? Right. So the first thing I could tell you about, uh, quite a lot of you, the first thing I could tell you about the University of Bedfordshire is that they are located in the UK, right? Does anybody know which part in the UK they're located? Anybody want to make a guess? Bedfordshire. So they are located in Bedford. The first campus actually was in Bedford in the UK, which is why they call them Bedfordshire, right? But their main campus now actually is in Luton. So just a little bit about the university. Um, they have over 100 years experience in quality and in tertiary education. They have over 20,000 students guys from 100 different countries. A lot of those students are on campus. They have four different campuses in the UK, five actually, Luton, Bedford, Putridge, Aylesbury, and Milton Keynes. But they also have education partners globally, throughout the globe. Um, CTS College, of course, is one of them. And so they have 20,000 students from all over the globe on campus and with education partners undertaking the various programs that the university offers, right? The education partners which they have are mainly in China, Middle East, Europe, Southeast Asia, Trinidad and Tobago, and quite recently they, they started a partnership with a school in Guyana. In Trinidad and Tobago, they have three partners. I wouldn't tell you who are the other two, but of course CTS College is one of them, right? And if it is you're considering signing up for the MBA, CTS College would be the only option, right? So that's a little bit about the university. We've started this MBA program and this partnership, guys, since November of 2017 with the university, right? So we have some fair amount of experience with the MBA program, with the learning outcomes, with the delivery, with the style, with the assessments, with everything with the university, you know? And as we go along, we always continue to, to try to improve the services and try to improve the experience from students. And I'll tell you a little bit about that as we proceed as well, right? So that's a little bit about university. You could actually go on their website and take a look at the, some of the programs they offer. And they actually have a very active uh, social media presence. So you could go on Facebook and like their page and follow them and you learn a lot about university as well, right? So that's the University of Bedfordshire. Let me tell you a little bit about CTS College now. And earlier I'd asked a question, how many of you are new to CTS College? You never attended CTS College before. Quite a few responses. So let me tell you a little bit about CTS. We're fairly small compared to some of the larger tertiary institutions, right? UE and UTT. But CTS College was established in October of 1999. Uh, it was formed and established by our current executive director, that's Mr. Ravi Raghunath. And actually, he would have been here today, but he has another session as well for another program that we're offering. But he would have been here and brought greetings, right? So initially when we started guys, we started as a consultancy company in IT because that is where he graduated from, right? His bachelor's degree or his undergraduate was in IT. So they started selling laptops and providing IT services and quite by accident, we got into education. That's because a few students from a nearby school, they needed help. They were doing a, a, a certificate course in IT. They needed help and they came across to, to CTS at the times, Complete Technology Solutions. That is the acronym, right? And uh, Mr. Raghunath and the staff at the time would have started helping these students. But then they realized education was their passion, helping others to learn and to achieve and get their qualification was their passion. And so initially we started with CXC courses, certificate programs, and the fast forward to today, we offer up to the postgraduate qualifications, right? But as you would know, the nature and the structure and the model for our academic programs is that what we call transnational arrangements. And what that means is that we would deliver the classes in partnership with foreign recognized, globally recognized and accredited tertiary institutions and universities. So we partner with these universities, we offer the tuition and the support here, but that those assessments, that exam or that certificate you get at the end of the program is from that awarding body or from that university, right? 
So that is how we would partner with the University of Bedfordshire as well to offer the MBA program. Guys, at this point, any questions about University of Bedfordshire or CTS College? No questions at all? No, I'm all right. All right, all right cool, no problem. And again, if you have any questions, you could post them in the chat and Kelly would be more than happy to respond to, to some of these questions. And just a reminder, guys, at the end of this session, I will have an, well, I'd stay back for those of you who want to leave, you can leave, but I would stay back as well. And I would answer any questions which you might have personally or to find out about your own personal situation or any other general questions. So I'd stay back and we'd conduct that as well. All right? Yeah. So let me just conclude with CTS. We're a private tertiary institution. We have over 20 years in tertiary education. Apart from the academic courses, we also offer our own courses like the short courses, professional development. So we have a lot of experience and a wealth of experience in tertiary education. We are ACTT recognized and I'll go through accreditation because that is really important if it is you're looking at look, uh, enrolling in a tertiary program, all right? And that's it basically about CTS College. The main thing I should mention about CTS College, and I did say we're fairly small compared to some of the larger tertiary institutions, is that our philosophy and the reason why we're fairly successful during the past few years is that we try to go above and beyond for students. So we try to live and practice and experience student support excellence. And what that simply means is that, you know, look, students, we realize when you enroll in a program is more than just going into a classroom and reading a book or reading a slide and having a discussion with a lecturer. In order for you to fully get that support, you need the support on the outside as well. You need the administrative support, which you would get from me. So generally, as the program manager, students have access to me. Well, I wouldn't say 24 seven because I mean, you know, if you call like one o'clock in the morning, I may not answer, but you have access to me outside of working hours. So it's not just to say eight to four, you have access to me and whatever queries you have after that, you have to wait until the next day. All our program managers are fairly accessible. You could call us on our cells, you could WhatsApp us, you could call us through the office numbers, you could email as well, right? So we try to be there for students throughout because naturally when you enroll for any tertiary program, guys, you'll need that support. Even our lecturers as well are available to students even outside the classroom. So if it is you're not too sure about a topic or you need help with the assignment, the lecturers are available for you outside the classroom as well. And a bit later, I'll talk about the support and what the lecturers do to help you, the student, when you have to undertake your assignments and your assessments, right? And so because we, we, we try to practice that, that motto, that, that education, that experience, education beyond the experience or education beyond academics, then you know it becomes easier for you, the student, to transition and settle in and get that support that you need. All right. So that's a little bit about CTS College. And as I promised earlier, I have a student. I'm doing. Let me see. Are you here with us? Hi, Ravi. Good morning. I'm here. All right. I'm not seeing you on the. Just give me one second. Right. Guys. Before I introduce you to Abdullah, um, let me just say this about Abdullah. Now, we asked him to, to, to come into the session today and give a brief testimonial about his experience in the MBA program. The reason why I ask Abdullah is that Abdullah represents you and me as a typical student, all right? And what I mean by that is that when Abdullah signed up for the program initially, he didn't want to sign up for it. His wife actually forced him and made him sign up for the program, right? But he's a typical student is that in that he has commitments as well. He has a very demanding job, which naturally would take away from the amount of time. You could commit to an MBA program, right? He has a family as well. He has two young kids. In fact, when he started, I think his, his youngest had, was just born or he was very young as well, right? Apart from that, he had a very demanding job and he had other commitments. And he wasn't the typical, he wasn't sorry, the best student, not necessarily the best student, and no offense, Abdullah, oh, that's because, all of all these, because of all these challenges that he had, but he persevered. He didn't always get through with his assignments, all right? Because, you know, because of all these other commitments, but he persevered and he got the support from both from CTS College and his family. So without further delay, let me just ask Abdullah to come in and give a testimonial about his experience <clears throat> in the MBA program 
and any advice he could give to you as a student looking to enroll in the, in the MBA program. Right, so Abdullah, you can take it. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abdullah Khan, and I am a 2021 MBA graduate of CTS College. It certainly is an honor to be selected by the CTS Institute to address a group of aspiring leaders like yourself. Before I start narrating my journey, I just want to put three questions out there to you all. It doesn't have to be answered. First one is, who enrolls in an MBA at 37 years old? That's the first one. Second question, who enrolls in an MBA at 37 years old, one month into a new job? Second question. Third question, who enrolls in an MBA at 37, one month into a new job with a two week old baby? That's me. And I'm here today to tell you all my story, how CTS College changed my life, not just academically, but generally. And the journey starts a little over one year ago, I was a member of the audience like yourself. I was apprehensive, I was nervous, I was uncertain, and as my program manager highlighted, as fate would have it, my wife demanded that I enroll into the MBA because she thought a new academic field would keep me motivated. She took time off from her job without even telling me, collected the forms, we had it completed, and delivered to CTS. And my first encounter with Mr. Johnson, he came out of his office and he greeted me. He welcomed me into the program and all smiles on his end. But from, my, from, from where I sat, I was like, oh my goodness, this is another one of my failures and you know, time will tell and eventually I'll just drop off. So that, that was my inner feeling my first encounter with Mr. Johnson and CTS Institute. Eventually I enrolled and classes started. And my first unit was project management. I had no experience in project management, nor did I enroll in any sort of management studies prior to this program. I, I went through the mature route. And as classes progressed, things started becoming very difficult for me. And I decided silently, I am going to drop out. So I called Mr. Raguna and I explained to him because it was at the height of COVID that listen, I can't commit to financial obligations. Thank you very much. I wish CTS well in the future, maybe some other time I'll enroll. And the conversation did not go the way I wanted it to. In fact, his response was Abdullah. If you need extra time to pay, I would give you that extra time to pay. And mind you me, I used COVID as the excuse to cop out of the program. But his response was, he would give me extra time to pay. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, what, what is going on here? Like, you know, what's the agenda? Why, why is he being so nice? So eventually, we walked away from the conversation that I would continue. And I continued. First assignment for project management comes out and I pass, very surprised. And then the second assignment for project management is out and I fail. And that's when things started to resonate in my mind to say, you know what, this really is not for me. So classes continued. The unit of project management is now finished. And the second unit starts, which is strategy and the global competitive environment. This lecturer, Mr. Sukdar, is very famous. In fact, he lectured some of my own relatives who I heard of and, spoke, and they spoke very highly of him. I, I didn't feel that way though. In fact, in the WhatsApp chat group that students created, I would be one of those who would come in and just rant and, and, and speak the most negative things about Mr. Sukdar, like, you know, what's so fantastic about him. And I would start class with one mindset and I would leave his class even more confused. 
and the assignment comes out and I'm now in limbo because I totally am lost with, with classes. But usually what Mr. Sukdar does is that he gives you an outline and an approach and he gives you advice as well and he coaches you in the best possible form and fashion to approach your assignments. And I decided that, you know what, I'm going to follow his guidelines. Again, I had to come up to speed because I'm also lost as well. I followed his guidelines and I passed assignment one. Assignment two for strategy comes out. I pass and the repeat of project management, I also passed that. So my confidence level started to grow immensely. So I have two units completed. And I'm now onto my third unit, which is corporate innovation. And I took that entire unit for granted to the point that I failed that entire unit. And I'm glad that I failed it. And maybe you may be asking why. And I'll, I'll share that with you as, as the journey and the story continues. But when everyone else in terms of my classmates were advancing, I was one of those who was left behind and I decided to go rogue and silent. So everyone else has now moved on to their fourth unit, which is leadership. And I am still stuck, unable to. So the first class for leadership starts. I remember I told you all earlier that I was one of those students who would speak very negatively about Mr. Sukhdar. The first leadership class starts and I miss it. And when I missed it, I also spoke to Mr. Johnson about taking a leave of absence and definitely making up my mind this time that, you know what, I'm definitely going to walk away from this program for a little while. The very said Mr. Sukdar, who I would have spoken negatively about, was the only lecturer since I knew myself, well, besides kindergarten, of course, where you miss a class and the teacher calls you. So the Sunday after, he calls me on WhatsApp once, I ignore. Twice, I ignore. Be mobile to be mobile, I also ignore. Colleagues are also calling me because I decided to go into complete silence. <clears throat> then I decided to return his call. And he said to me, you know what, Abdullah? Even if you don't want to do the assignments, still sit in my class and you'll have an advance and you'll have, sorry, you'll have an advantage and a head start. And after that conversation, I made up my mind to go back to Mr. Johnson to say to him, I'm going to continue with this program. And Mr. Sukdar has been very instrumental in changing my mindset. So leadership, now I, I, I enroll into the leadership unit Assignment comes out, I pass, and you repeat for corporate innovation that I had to do over entirely. I also passed that unit. That is when I started to see greatness. And when I say that, CTS professors have the ability to change lives. And this is one clear experience. <clears throat> In my fifth unit, which is management and practice, we had to assume the role of a director managing an airline. And we started off as one of the worst performing groups, not just in rank, number, but also financially. And at the end of the simulator, our group was acknowledged by Mr. Sukdar as one of the best performing groups <clears throat> sorry, he has seen in a long time. That we couldn't ask for anything better. So they simulated the entire group we passed, as well as the theory assignment we also passed. And now comes finals, the big battle, theory and practice. And I was assigned Kamla, sorry, Professor Kamla Rampasad de Silva. She also had a different approach. She was very she, her approach was very one-to-one -one and she would buff, but she would buff not to embarrass, but to say, you know what, Abdullah, come back on track. Why are you doing this? And I appreciated that so much. 
and the failures and the lessons learned from both project management and corporate innovation humbled me. Because when a lecturer is coming down on you, they want you to pass. And what would have happened if I passed all my units and I felt I was above my lecturer? So, you know, I would not have seen the result that I did see. And as time passed and I started listening to her, just like I did with Barry, I also passed my final unit without having to repeat. So this in itself for me was a wonderful feeling, not just of earning the credential MBA, but being a humble soul and taking instructions from your lecturers and tides began to shift. So <clears throat> what I would like to share with you all are some lessons learned. Number one, don't let financial constraints deter you from enrolling into this MBA. CTS is an intellectual powerhouse. If Mr. Johnson didn't say it, I will help him. We are an intellectual force to be reckoned with, not just locally, but internationally. Number two, never say never. Never say you never thought you could do an MBA. Never say, I never thought I would address an audience like yourself. The first time I had to speak and I was asked to, I got up early and typed a three page document on MS Word. And when I had to deliver that speech, I used very little from that entire document. Similarly today, I am using bullet points and addressing crowds like yourself was something I never did in the past. And my new me again, in simple bullet point form. So my skill set also developed in being able to deliver an effective address. Number three, value your lecturers. They helped me to become better because I always thought that the world was a very cool place. I always thought that the world was a very selfish, self-centered place where no one cared. But when Mr. Sukdar gave me that phone call, the same individual who I would have not been appealed by, and just to sidetrack a little bit, there's a, there's a famous Middle Eastern saying, when you dislike someone, do it with a little bit of reservation because one day they will become your friend. And this is what happened when Mr. Sokdar made that phone call. My entire perspective changed completely. And where I would have been negative and uncertain, I started to become motivated and driven. So CTS lecturers, are, and, and as Mr. Johnson said, they care. They do care, and I am an example as a son of CTS for saying that. As challenging and as draining as this master's was, I can attest to you the reward is phenomenally euphoric. It is, it's almost like I, I woke up feeling as I'm Captain America or Greenland and I got superpowers. I have a credential that I could use MBA. Today I stand before you to challenge and discover your purpose in life and to decide what you are meant to do. Education is the most powerful resource of the world. And this MBA through CTS, as well as the graduating class of 2021 made us all champions. Why? Because our rhetoric was to never give up. And as I close, I ask of you to develop yourself spiritually. The social fabric of the world is made up of multiple religions and races. So I will say, you know, attach yourself to God because the frustrating times you will need to hold on to something. CTS College, don't leave this session today with regret. Failure is part of the journey of success and certainty is part of the journey of success as well. But had I not enrolled in this MBA one year ago, where would I be today? a lost person. Don't leave today's session <clears throat> without uncertainty. Leave today's session saying, yes, I'm going to enroll with CTS because it's going to change my life intellectually. It's going to change my life generally. And it's going to make me become a more resilient individual. 
because if I could do it, there will, and I'm seeing 89 participants here. If I could do it, all 89 of you could do it as well. So let me wish you all all the best. I look forward to chatting with you all again, Mr. Johnson. I hope that your work becomes easy as the days go by. And thank you so much for having me. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much, Abdullah. Thank you for that testimonial. In fact, I never tell you this, but I used to get Brexit here when he was being delinquent at times. I just never tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, yeah, and I didn't I didn't mention this as well. I too was a I too was a student at CTS College. In fact, over 12 years ago, I enrolled to, to undertake my, my bachelor's degree. And part of me doing what I do and part of me being here and providing the support of students is really is giving back to CTS College, is giving back to Mr. Ragunath, our executive director. And most of all is giving back to students. Yes, you do it for the salary, but nothing fulfills me more than to see students like Abdullah and many other students coming through the program, getting qualified, whether it's, it's an, an MBA or a bachelor's degree, and that qualification making a difference in their lives. It gives my job meaning and it gives my job purpose to see that we actually making a difference in the lives of our students and even those impacted by the, by the work from our students as well in terms of their families and those who they work with. So thank you very much for that testimonial, Abdullah. No, we did not pay him to do that testimonial. He did it on his free will, own free will. And he said what he said. We didn't coach him on what to say, right? So guys, so that's it from our student, Abdullah. So you have an idea now of CTS College and the, the environment and the the, the, the uh, values that we try to promote at the college, right? Not only for us, but for our lecturers as well. And I'm not saying it's perfect. You may not get the perfect service from us or from the university or even from the lecturers, but at least we realize, look, student support and customer service makes a difference and we continuously strive to provide continuous improvement in that area, all right? So let's move on. We, we are due to finish at 10 to 10. We may not just... Just, we'll just go a little bit beyond, right? But let's move on because no, I just want to go through some more important points and then we'll take your questions at the end. In terms of accreditation, guys, it's really important that when you're looking at enrolling for a tertiary program, that that program is accredited. This MBA program, first of all, is recognized locally by the Accreditation Council. That's this logo here, uh, the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. So it's recognized locally. And if it is you go on ACTT's website, first of all, you'd see CTS College as a registered institution with the Accreditation Council. And secondly, you'd see the University of Bedfordshire as a recognized awarding body with the Accreditation Council as well. And that's really important. Accreditation is so important. Secondly, this program is accredited by the Quality Assurance Agency or the QAA in the UK. And accreditation, as I keep on saying, is so important because if it is you undertaken a program, guys, and it's not accredited, chances are if it is you apply for a job and your potential employers check that qualification and recognize it's not accredited, guess what? You may not get that job. Or if it is you enroll for a program that's not accredited and you look to matriculate a higher level program and they realize, well, that program is not accredited, then you may not get into the program. But apart from that, the simple fact that accreditation ensures that quality is maintained in any program or institution. And I'll give you an example. For a program to be, to be accredited by the, by the ACTT, it has to go through a number of criteria, about 30 something different standards and criteria. I am responsible for accreditation at CTS College. So by the time I done with that document showing where CTS College meets that criteria, that document is about 400 and something pages. So they look at everything. They look at the facilities. They look at the lecturers, the qualifications of the lecturers and the staff. They look at the policies which we have to govern both the institution and students. They look at a number of things and we have to satisfy each one of that, those criteria and standards. And Betty Bottom, the look for a program or for an institution to be accredited, it would have gone through some sort of quality assurance. Apart from that, I would have done training with the QAA as well in the UK. I can tell you this, for a program to be accredited in the UK, bet your bottom dollar that that process is very rigid. The QA would go into the, to that university or that institution and spend about two months there doing a full audit. 
So for that university to get accreditation status, it would have gone through that robust accreditation and quality assurance process, right? And guys, you could go on QA's website as well and verify the accreditation of the University of Bedfordshire. All right? <laughs> Any questions on the accreditation of um, this program or any other thing that we covered thus far before we move on? Yes, good morning. Morning, Mohinder. Yes, um, so in relation to the accreditation part of it, right? Right. And so after completing and after successfully completing the, the program and being qualified, right? right. Um, in the job market scheme of things, right? Would we mm -hmm. only be limited to being able to apply for jobs in the UK or would it or, or would it be recognized in places like New Zealand or, or Canada? No, not at all. And there is a whole purpose of accreditation to ensure that a program or institution is recognized globally because accreditation meets certain standards both locally to the local country in which is being offered in and also okay. internationally, uh, internationally as well. So like I okay. mentioned early on, we had students with this MBA qualification who would have applied for and migrated to Canada and actually got jobs in Canada based on the okay. fact that they had the, the qualification, right? All right, yes. Yeah. Thanks very much. No problem, All right? So let's continue. As I mentioned before, guys, this MBA is very practical. So Yes, you have theory to cover. And you have recommended textbooks that you need to read. But don't come into this program and expect, well, you know, it's a bunch of textbooks that you need to read and you need to regurgitate that theory. This is more practical. It's more about applying that theory. So when you have assignments to do, they might give you a case study. They might tell you, analyze an organization or analyze your organization using the theories covered for that particular Hello, subject. Morning. Yeah, Belinda, just give me one second, right? Yes. They might tell you, analyze the theories using the, the concepts covered for that particular subject. They might tell you, come up with recommendations for how you can make improvements in your organization or that case study organization. So it's very practical and you won't get bored because you also have to do a lot of research outside the textbook, research on your own as well, to look at the best practices and support the theories that you're trying to come up with as well. All right, sorry, Belinda, you could go ahead. Um, is the qualifications also recognized in America? Because I will be migrating to America soon. It is. We've actually had students with this MBA qualification going into the U.S. And this guy, he works for, it was Virgin U.S. They had a, a branch in the U.S. in Orlando. And he actually got that job based on the fact that they assessed his qualification, his MBA qualification. Right? So it is recognized. And like I said before, that's the purpose of accreditation, really, is to ensure that programs and qualifications are recognized globally. Yeah. Thank you. Right. No problem. Right, guys. So let's get into the details of the program as well and the nitty gritty. This program is accelerated. Do you all know how long or how long it takes to complete this entire MBA program? Anybody? Twelve months. Say that again. Sorry. Twelve months. Twelve months. Yeah. So it's accelerated, right? It's what we call accelerated because you could complete this MBA in twelve months. And how we do that is through block delivery. And what blocks delivery simply means, guys, is that students, you know, like when I did my undergraduate degree, I had three or four subjects. And I would have had to, to do those three or four subjects within a semester. And at the end of the semester, which is like within a week, I had to write exams or do assignments for the three or four different subjects. With this program, the block delivery is where The block delivery is where you focus on one subject at a time. And I think you could see the benefit of that because in trying, instead of trying to study for three, four different subjects, you're focusing on one subject at a time. But that subject is covered within six weeks of classes. This program, guys, is no different from any other recognized or accredited MBA program in terms of the content that you need to cover, in terms of the credits that you'd gain at the end of it, right? And because it's no different, you have a lot of work to cover within that six week period. But the advantage is you focus on that one subject at a time. And how our classes run is that we have classes on weekends, typically on Saturdays. When you reach your project stage, those would be on Sundays, but it's for the entire day on a Saturday. From 8 a.m., 
Well, the official time is 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. And some of you are probably holding your head and bowling and saying, oh, gosh, whole day classes. I can't even focus on a two-hour class. Fall for the entire day. And there's a lot of work you need to cover, and that's why we have the whole day classes. But what some of the better lecturers do, in fact, most of our lecturers, what they do is that they split up those classes. So you might have a little break in between, right? Apart from that, you'd get your lunch break to break the monotony of one person talking, like how I do now and talking all the time. The lecturer would split up the class into groups and they would have group work. They would discuss topics. They would come back into the main class and discuss those topics. So it's not monotonous. It's not the same person talking all the time. It's very dynamic. And because of that, that entire day passes very quickly. In fact, we say 5 p.m., but sometimes the classes may finish like three, between three to four to half hour. Depends on the lecturer. Depends on how much work you cover at the time, right? But the classes go by very quickly. There's a lot of work to cover. The classes are very dynamic, right? So that's it for the classes. You have classes that runs for six weeks, followed by a two-week break. At the end of that two-week break, guys, or the end of two months, basically, you go on to your next subject. And basically, you're doing that for six subjects. Now, this two-week, where I say followed by a two-week break, that's not really a break per se, but what some of the better students do is that they use that two weeks to prepare for the next unit or for the next subject that comes up, right? And because of that, they get a head start, they get a foundation on that next subject that comes up, right? Now, um, I have two persons. Beverly, do you have a question? Let me just take your questions quickly before I continue. Bev? All right, she probably just raised her hand. Alistair, all right, that's okay. All right, guys, so, Hi. and yeah, um, Alistair, so question? Uh, yeah. yeah, concerning the, I think this is one of the final projects. My right. concern is, um, do we, well, I, I mean, I don't want to preempt, if you if you mentioned it before, I can't join a bit later, and I don't want to preempt, if you have to go and speak, speak about it later on in the session. No, but, that's um, okay, you can ask, you can ask. The question yeah. I'm asking basically is um, for your final projects. Would, mm -hmm. would you require physically working for a company to do your final project to liaison? Is it a no. requirement? Is it, is it no. a necessity or would it help? No, it's not, it's not a necessity. It wouldn't help. In fact, that final project is research-based. So what you look at is, and I guess depending on your specialization, and we'll go into the specializations right after, is you look at a particular area of research. You look at an organization that that research is being done in not necessarily your own company or company that you have to go into. And you'd actually look at a country or region in which it's being done in. Because Trinidad is fairly limited in terms of the information we could get, or companies might not give that information. We restrict it to that area where you look at it globally and you get the information based on a case study or research, right? So you don't have to use a, a specific company or go into a specific company, all right? Okay, thanks, thanks very much. No problem. Right, so guys, as I was saying, you have six subjects to complete. Each subject is around um, two months, basically. So that takes you a year to complete the entire program. It's very fast paced um, because look, you have your classes for the entire day. At the end of, it's six weeks I'm saying, right? At the end of week three, you have one assignment as due. And at the end of week six, you have your second assignment as due. And as I mentioned early on, these are not exams, in fact, most of the, the assignments are all assignment based, right? Meaning you do your assignment at home, you work on it at home and you submit online. What we've seen recently, though, and I have to mention it, is that recently the university started introducing exams for some of the units, not, not all. In fact, only for two of the 2D something units which we offer, right? And the last exam was for business economics. So for those of you who are doing finance, you may have an exam for that one particular subject for one of the assignments. And that exam is all done online. So you don't have to come into school to write it. You don't have to um, meet up with other persons in our exam room, it's done online, okay? But the majority for the record sake of the uh, assessments would be assignment based, all right? Hi, good morning. Hi, morning. Um, sure. The question I have is, say for instance, God forbid, um, you fail one of the blocks, right? Do you get to move on to the other block or you have to pass all before you actually move on to the other no, one? No, no, if, if you fail, and hopefully that wouldn't happen because I'll go into the support, so nobody here should fail, right? But if you fail, you move on to the other subject. 
and whatever subject you're not successful with, you have to do a referral, what we call a referral assignment, which is a similar assignment or the same assignment. You do that together with the next subject that you're doing, right? And so when you do that referral, they, they cap it at 40%. Yeah. Oh, right? um, but, once you have to do a referral, um, you don't get higher than 40%. Yeah, they cap it at 40%, but it doesn't prevent you from moving on. You do it together with the next subject that you're doing. You right? just double up. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, I can, I, can I please ask something, please? Um, sure, with sure. Yeah. to the same question about feeling a module, right? You said right. that um, you can move on and then you do, based on that, is there one assignment that you have to pass, actually pass the module, or would it be a double assignments like the actual module? Right, I'll go into the, I'll go into the pass mark okay. after, but it's... All right, it's, no problem. Yeah, all right. So, right, guys, so let me just go in quickly into the specializations which we offer. I know a lot of you would have seen these specializations on our website or on the email that we sent. And let me just tell you quickly how the program is structured, right? Basically, we have nine different specializations. Oil and gas, human resource management, hospital and health service management, digital technology management, finance, logistics, and marketing. Or if you don't want to specialize, we have two general options available. And how the program is structured, let me just go to the next slide to quickly explain and show you how it's structured, right? How the program is structured is that you have four core units to undertake in this entire program. Leading and managing, strategy and the global, and two final projects, which you do at the end, right? So these are four. Regardless of the specialization, guys, you have to do these four subjects, right? And then depending on the specialization that you're undertaking, then you do two electives specific to that specialization. So let's say Raynell decides to do an MBA in human resource management. Raynell has to do these four core subjects here and then two electives under HR, corporate innovation and entrepreneurship and international and comparative HRM. All right, and that's how the program is structured. Some of you may not be sure as to what specialization might be best for you. I get a lot of questions from students asking what is the best specialization, but that's really subjective and it all depends on what you want to do in terms of your career or in terms of what you want to do um, academic wise, right? But we'd be more than happy to sit down with you if it is you're not too sure on and basically advise you what may be the best specialization. But it all depends on your circumstances and your situation as well, all right? So I wouldn't go through each of the slides here, but how the program is structured, let's say you do need MBA general option one. And as I mentioned before, you have two core units to do. You have two electives to do and the electives are in red here. And then you have two projects to do at the end. And basically guys, I will send this, this slide for you, this information to you at the end of the information session. But basically it's listed here for all of the specializations which we offer. So you could go through that information and look at the subjects that's being offered, look at the electives that, that are being offered in each of the specializations, right? And then that might help you make a decision as to what might be the better you would need to undertake, yeah? Right, so it's listed here, but we wouldn't go into it. In terms of the, what I'll cover now is our intake periods, the entry requirements, and then I'll get to the final and most important thing for you, which is the costing, right? So we have six different intake periods, September, November, January, March, June, and the very next intake, which is possible for you, is July. Classes actually start at the end of July, July the 31st. I'll go through the application process and all of that after, right? But next set of classes, July the 31st. If not, after that would be September. And classes start on September the 25th, right? So just in case you're considering or thinking about when you could start, these are the different options. And it's very flexible in terms of the number of intakes which we have, right? So, to answer Nisha's question now, in order to pass a unit, you must get an aggregate grade of 40%. Remember, before I mentioned, you have two assignments, two subjects that you need to undertake. You must get at least 40% across both of those assignments in order to pass, right? If you get less than 40%, then, then obviously it's a fail, but you'd have to do the referral, Nisha, for that one subject or for the two subjects if you get less than 40% in each one, right? So let's say so you get no, what I was asking is with the referral is just one paper you're doing one assignment. So no. So let's say you in that referral you feel two subjects, you'd have to do referral for the two assignments. Sorry, understood. for the two assignments. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Right? yeah. Right. 
And guys, at the end of it, you could graduate with an MBA with a distinction. And as if you have a 65% overall in the four units and 70% in the dissertation state, or you can graduate with an MBA in com commendation, which is 55% overall and 60% in the dissertation. If not, and you don't get these, then you will simply graduate with an MBA. And to be quite honest, most employers, if not all, do really look at whether or not you graduate with a first class, second class, or distinction. Always really good to, to strive for and to achieve. But at the end of the day, they look at the qualification, they look at the nature and the attitude of the person as well, right? Right. So let me talk about the support. I know you're all waiting on the question and we're getting there soon. We're just a couple of minutes away from it. Let me just talk quickly about the support, right? Because we boost and we talk about the support and we had our students come in and tell you about the support as well. What do all lecturers do? Apart from myself and all lecturers being available to you outside of class time and outside of business hours, the most important thing for you as a student would be to pass your, your assignments, right? Yeah? So here's what our lecturers do and here's what CTS does. The first thing we do is we ask our lecturers to document an assignment guideline for whatever assignment it is you need to do. And what that document is, it really, it outlines a, a recommended structure as to how you could approach your assignment. For example, they would give you an introduction and say, look, you have a structure with an introduction. In the body, these are some of the things you could discuss in the body of the assignment. These are some of the theories. These are some of the examples you could give. This is how you could give a recommendation. So basically they give you a comprehensive guideline as to how you could approach that assignment, right? At this level, they wouldn't tell you exactly what to write, when to write, where to write it, right? But they'd give you a general guideline. And that's quite useful because sometimes reality is students don't have the time to attend all the classes or, or understand the content fully. And that assignment really helps. In fact, I don't attend any of the classes, I've never did. And I would actually use that assignment guideline that lecturers um, document to help students as well, right? So it's really comprehensive. But apart from that guideline, guys, and if it is you're really disciplined enough, our lecturers would take assignment drafts from you. So if you say you start your assignment and you could submit to them by a particular deadline, they would review that draft of your assignment and they would put in comments or they would tell you, look, these are some of the areas that you could change in order to, to improve the assignment. And it gives you a better chance of getting a higher mark, right? And, and university marks fairly, I wouldn't say hard, but they, they're fairly strict with their marking, right? Because they want to ensure that you maintain a certain level of quality in your academic writing. So our lecturers would review that draft. So by the time you get that assignment guideline and you have a review draft, when you submit your assignment, you have a fairly good chance of not only passing, but getting a right? And that's some of the support we would provide specifically as it concerns your assignment. And it really helps. Since we started doing that, guys, it made a difference in terms of the pass mark and the pass rate for CTS. Our pass rate is on average around 92 or 94% on average. You have some subjects where you have 100% pass rate in, others where it's not all that good. And I could honestly sit down and tell you here today that the main reason why students fail, and I would put it in emails that are sent to them, is that either they don't submit assignments, and of course that would affect the pass rate, or they don't take the time to start the research early or to start the assignment early, and they start the assignment last minute, submit a substandard end product, and of course they may end up failing. But if it is you make the time and you put in your research and you allocate some independent time for studying guys, there's no way that you, you shouldn't pass this, you shouldn't fail this exam or the assignment or the, the entire unit, right? you would get a result, but you need to put in a fair amount of work to, in order to get that result, right? Fair enough? Um, I don't wanna, um, I know we session already over the time, but um, you said yeah. that the assignments are given for module on week three and week six. Submission yeah. of the assignments is based on what now? How long do you have no, to do the assignments? That is when you submit the assignments. You have access to your assignments before classes even start. You'd have access okay. to a student All right. portal. So and submission is week, week three and week six of the module, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay, correct. Great. Right? Right. And before you all start, guys, we would have an orientation session where we'd go through to you what is proper academic writing, how to research, how to reference properly. So you'd get that foundation even before you start your classes, right? So let me just go through now the entry requirements. And it's quite simple. The entry requirements, guys, is either a recognized bachelor's degree. So if you have a bachelor's degree, you could get into this program, right? 
Or some of you may not have the bachelor's degree. And as somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was Nisha, she don't have the bachelor's degree, but she certainly has the management or the supervisor or the senior work experience. And if you have at least three years management or supervisory experience, you could get into the program as well. You don't necessarily have to manage staff, like actually have staff on there, but they, what they would look at is the strategic functions that you perform. And based on that, they would make a decision whether or not you're allowed into the program. When I'm sending, guys, because I know a lot of you might have the, the management experience, when I'm sending the email with all the details from today, there's actually a sample letter or template I would send for you, for you as well, so that your employers or your organization can follow that template and basically do the letter to, to, to verify your work experience and your position. And all that. Right? So just to be clear with that. Right. And this is the entry requirement. I'm going to send you the details of exactly what you'd need to complete, what documents you'd need to submit in order to apply to the program, right? So let's get to the cost now, which is the final thing you are waiting on, right? For 87 of you in this, in this Zoom call. So in terms of the costing, before I go into CTS's costing, let me do, just do a quick comparison. Guys, if it is you have to, to do the, the IMB, and this is in no way criticizing or, or bad talking or you know, any other MBA program in Trinidad, because they're all good MBA programs, if you ask me, right? If you have to do the MBA at Logjack, it's 100,000, basically, right? And that's with gate funding. Gate would fund 50% of the minimum household, and you need to do the means test. If you have to do the MBA with SBCS, does anybody know which university they partner with to offer the MBA program? Harriet Watt. Right, so if you have to do that MBA with Harriet Watt, it's 90,000 plus. And if you have to do the only other MBA in Trinidad apart from, from those, if you have to do the MBA at SAMS, does anybody know which university they partner with? Anglia Ruskin. Anglia Ruskin, so you're all doing your research, boy. Okay, good, that's good. If you have to do the MBA at SAMS, it's 64,300 basic or 83,200. And that's with executive support, right? That's like with lunch and you would have gotten the, the, the support in terms of the lecturers providing you with reviewing your drafts and all of that, right? If you guys have to go in the UK, at the University of Bedfordshire, in the campus in Bedford or Luton and undertake the same MBA, it's 12,500 pounds. That's what international students would actually pay in the UK on campus, which is around 125,000 TT, right? The cost of this MBA program, and before I go into the cost, let me just say that the cost is in no way a reflection of the quality or the recognition or the accreditation of the program, right? Because it's much lower than, than these comparisons which I gave you here. There's no way reflection, but we decided to go with a costing strategy to have a lower costing price in order to get the number up the, the, the profit from this program, right? The cost of this program, if it is you're coming off the street and you have to do this program in total, all the details are here, you look at it after, but on average, the total is around 46,500, which is still not, not a bad costing for an MBA program as recognized and accredited, right? Again, there's no reflection. And actually, guys, if it was up to me, the cost of this MBA program would have been a bit higher than that, right? because I value the quality that this program offers. But fortunately for you, it's not up to me. So it's 46,500. But we did mention when we sent you the details of this program, and because you attended today, that there would be a special offer for those of you who attend today and apply within a, a specific time frame, right? So let me go through that now. In terms of the special offer, and the special offer is based on the fact that, if, look, if you apply and you start in July or September latest, you would be entitled to, to these discounts, right? If you pay all the fees up front, and I'll go through the details after, you'd save 12,000 of the entire tuition. So instead of paying 46,500, on average, you'd pay around 34,500, right? Maybe a little bit cheaper than that because of the, the low rate of the UK or the still in pounds right now. If you pay every semester, semester is like every four months, guys. So if you pay in three parts at the start of every semester, you save 9,000 right? So instead of paying 46500 initially here, you'd pay around 37500 right? And the last payment option, because not all of you could pay all these fees up front, or not everybody could pay at the start of the semester, but some of you may be able to afford it every month, right? And if it is you're paying monthly, you'd still save 6000 of the entire tuition. So instead of paying 46500 
what you'd pay is around 40,500 in total for the entire tuition, right? And the slides here, let me just go through it quickly. It's here as well, right? So you'll see the breakdown. If you pay all the fees up front, the tuition part of it, you'll get the 12,000 more, right? University exam fees is 1,500 pounds and registration is 1,500 TT. So this, if you pay all up front, this is where you get the 34,500. But you all understand, right? And I'll stay after to take some of the questions but you all understand how the discount works, right? Depending on how you pay, you'd get a certain amount of discount. And that would lower the cost from the 46,500 to um, whatever it is after the discount, all right? If it is you're paying every semester, guys, this is how you do it. These are the fees you'd pay every semester, right? So instead of paying 10,000 tuition, you pay 7,000 tuition every four months, every semester, all right? And this is the fee here. Again, you'd see the slides. You take a look at the slides so you'd see what it entails. But if you pay monthly, you'd still see it. All right? And these are the fees here. Now, I went through it kind of quickly, but like I say, I'll send you the information so you could take it in and you could internalize and, and look at it, right? But any question on the fees, guys, or the, the discounts or the costing? No question on the fees? Um, I'm just thinking about the registration. How long does it take after you submit documents that you get? Um, oh, it takes. Because yeah. um, we may need yeah, to provide that letter to the uh, financial institution to get the fees. So I'm looking at um, how, if you could meet the July deadline. Yeah, definitely. Then, it takes about it takes about one to two weeks to process, but if you need to get that process started, even before you get accepted, you can email me my details. You'll get my email after, but, and I would provide like an invoice. The financial institution would need for the very first thing, the invoice with the, with the total. So I could provide that. And eventually when the acceptance letter comes through, you can provide that to them as well, right? But it takes about one to two weeks to process. Okay, nice. Yeah. Hi, could you go over the fees again, please? Um, like in detail, the total cost is how much? The monthly sure. cost, the registration, just um, word them out, not so much the pick. No, no problem. But be, let me do that, Jada, after I finish the session, and I'll go through in detail for you, right? Because I'm sure other persons might want to, 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 um, to go through it again. Great. So I'll no go problem. through that for you. Um, but I'll take other questions now before we close off. Guys, just to say as well, in order to, in order to qualify for the discount, you must submit your application form, your app there is your form on the supporting documents by July the 16th, which is this Friday coming here, right? Now, in order to submit your application, guys, you don't need to pay anything. There's no registration fee, no application fee, and you have nothing to lose. It's just to submit your application documents by Friday the 16th of July, by midnight on that night, right? In order to qualify. And then once you get accepted, that is when you start paying your fees, whether it's your registration, tuition, university fees, right? So nothing to lose. It's just a submit your application documents by Friday coming, Friday the 16th. And right? this is for the July intake or the September intake? Or right, so, what, so you could, for both. So you could submit your application by Friday and once you get accepted, then you'll tell us, look, you're starting in, in July or September. There's actually a field on the application form to put in your start date as well, right? Hi, um, what if you're still waiting on your degree? You're getting it this year, but I haven't. I'm getting it this year, but I haven't gotten my official transcript or anything yet. Do you have the certificate in issue or letter of completion? We could work with, with either of those. No, we finish on the um the thirtieth the thirtieth of um July. Oh, okay. Well no, yeah. we'd have to wait we'd have to wait on, on the formal completion in order to allow it to start. But right. when that time comes, Nisha. Or for anybody else who may not be able to get your documents by Friday, like a job letter, just liaise with me and I'd be more than happy to, to extend or be flexible with that deadline, right? Um, yeah. Nisha here, um, what, I'm, what I want to know is I'm not interested in starting until maybe October, November. So should right. I hold on with my application with regard to moving forward? Because I know you, said, you mentioned that this intake would be for July, for July um, or just, September. And September, that's, correct, yeah. That's correct. So yes, you, you can wait. Um, 
Or if you want to get some, it is up to you. But, but Either way, it doesn't this expire. Discount. You see, I want to take advantage of the discount. So I want to know if it will right. still so, run again. <laughs> so what we do is we budget these discounts for, for the next 20. So we budget it for sure for July and September. And I'll be honest with you, more than likely, if you start in October, you may get through. You just have to liaise with me. And we'd be more than happy to, to extend the discounted offer to you, right? Once it's with any budget. Okay, great. Thanks. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, guys, before we formally close off and go to the QA and go through the um, yes, questions? Sir, sure, Ian. Yeah, Ian. Okay. What, I, what I want to find out, right? Mm -hmm. I recently completed the Level 5 Diploma with you all in Human right. Resource Management and Business Management. Right. I have been in a supervisory position in my job. I work in ATTPS for more than right. three years. Right. Do you all have a sample letter that I can receive to get a write-up in order to skip the bachelor's to go straight to the master's? Yeah, so work experience is one of the criteria. So with your AB and the work experience, Ian, you could get in. And um, I, I, when I send the details, I'll send you that sample letter that the TTPS can, can follow or use to do the information for you, right? To, to outline the information for you. Sure, right? thank you very much, sir. All right, no problem. So guys, um, um, one more question, please. What is, what is sure. it, do you all have a cap on the amount of students you all take for each intake? No, Nisha, actually, because classes are online and it's all virtual, we don't have a cap. In fact, if our classes are big, and guys, right now we have 209 students in one class, right? That's 209 students who already started the MBA program. But if the classes are too big, even for online, we split it up into smaller sessions, but there's no cap for it. Physically, if you were in CTS and on campus, then we may have had a cut, but not for the virtual classes. Okay. Hi, can, hi, can I Sure. Hello? Yeah. Um, sure, pertaining, to the, pertaining to the um, online class that you mentioned, is it just because of COVID the classes are online or is it for, the, for this entire, um, for the entire year it would be online? No, it's because of the restrictions with COVID, we had to transition to the online classes and we can't have the face-to-face -face classes. And to be quite honest, we don't see that changing anytime soon in terms of being allowed to go back to the face-to-face -face classes. So it's currently so, online. And more than likely, for the year, it might remain online. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's up to, it's not only up to us, it's up to the university I know, I know. and to the accreditation council, but... We don't see things changing anytime soon that would allow us to go back to face-to-face -face classes. Yeah. But even if it does go back to face-to-face -face mid session, you all wouldn't be able to cater for this 200 plus quantity in our classroom. We could. So we, what we need to do is separate the classes into different cohorts and different times. That's how we did it before, actually. All right, okay. Um, what about gate? Um, is there any gate? Um... Oh, good question, Ria. And the answer to that is no, the program is not gate funded. In fact, in 2017, gate funded was, uh, was removed from all private tertiary institutions. And because of that, we no longer gate funded. But even without gate, it's still one of the most affordable MBA programs in Trinidad and Tobago right now, right? Okay. The only other gate funded MBA program is the Logjack IMBA. And as I mentioned before, they fund only 50%. You have to meet the household income requirement and the means test in order to qualify for gate, right? Right. Thank so you. here's... Yeah, no problem. So here's what I'll do, guys. I'll, I'll formally end our information session here. So thank you very much for your participation, for your questions, for your attention, for your patience as well, because I know we've gone beyond the time. Thank you very much for all of that. And hopefully we'd be able to, to hear from you and get your application in soon by the 16th, right? But if you all have any other questions, I'm staying on after to answer the one-on-one -on -one questions. But if you have any questions beyond that, feel free to... My contact details will be in the email and it's on this slide as well. Feel free to email or to call or to WhatsApp and we'd be more than happy to clarify any questions which you might have. All right. So thank you very much. I'm going now to the question and answer session to the open floor. And let me just answer, I can't remember who it was who asked, but let me just go back through the fees, right? Because he had asked me to go through the fees, right? So to go through the fees once again, for any student coming off the street, walking off the street, enrolling in this MBA program, the total cost in is 46500 right? So that would compromise of the university fees of £1,500 and our local fees, which is the tuition and registration, right? So it comes to 46500 For those of you who attended the session today, Dawn, who are applying within that time frame, 
we mentioned that you would get a discount and this is the discount and this is how it would work if you pay all your fees up front guys this is the um this is the fee here you would get 12000 of the tuition so it would be 18000 for our tuition 1500 pounds and 1500 tt registration that comes up to around 34500 in total right as if you pay all your fees up front in fact guys what some of the students do is that they would look at getting a loan facility or a loan from the bank because the amount you're saving here is more than you're actually paying interest for that loan, right? So a lot of students go through the loan process. But, and, but that's for those who would qualify and who could afford it. If not, the second option we have is where you could save 9,000 off in total tuition. And what that means is that you pay every semester. What you'd pay every semester is 7,000 TT, 500 pounds for the university fees and a one-time registration fee of 1,500 TT right and a semester is like every four months so what you'll be paying every four months is 7,000 tt and 500 pounds after that and in total what it's going to come up to at the end is around 37,500 in total right it all depends on the rate for the pounds and the last payment option is if you're paying monthly as well and if it is you're paying monthly what you would pay every month is 2,000 tt so instead of paying 25 you'd pay 2,000 tt for our local fees 125 pounds every month for the university fees and there's a one-time registration fee at the start of 1500 tt that's the registration right and in the end once you pay these fees every month which would be the 2,125 pounds it's going to come up to around 40,502 right that's out of your pocket that's what you would need to pay the only other fee guys which i'm seeing that you might have you need a payment that i'd see that you have to make which i didn't mention here is the cost of textbooks because they are recommended textbooks for every subject that you need to, to enroll in right yeah, and the cost of those the cost would vary it could be as little as 40 us to as much as 200 us but the reason why we didn't put it in here is that most of our students like most of them if not all i've never seen a student who actually purchases a textbook and the reason for that is that eventually as students when they enroll in the class and they start networking working with other students they would get the soft copies of the textbooks is quite easy to get online, right? So because of that, you don't really invest in the actual physical textbooks, you know? And the reality is, is not only the textbooks you'd be using, you have access as a student to an online library where you'd have access, and that's free, and we'd have access to online journals, articles, white papers, all relevant to the research that you need to do. And because of that, students already invest in the physical textbook, they would more or less get the, the, the soft copy of the textbook. For copyright reasons, we can't distribute the soft copies of the textbooks. But I can tell you as a student, once you enroll and you start networking with other students, you'll get a soft copy. It should be an issue, right? Uh, question. Sure. Um, and pre-COVID, um, for your exams, so it's basically a two-in-one question. Uh, for your exams, you guys had uh, moderated exams and you had to have the physical textbook. Um, so how, how is that working now with the everything being virtual? All right, so Curtis, that, that was with another edu academic institution, the Australian Institute of Business, where their assessments were exam type. In 2016, they went completely online, which means they didn't have a need for, for us. And because of that, we went with the University of Bedfordshire, and they do not have moderated exams. Like I mentioned before, the assessments are mostly assessment uh, assignments. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi, I have a question. Sure. This is Bavli. Um, more or less, I'm looking at starting October, November, and would be really appreciative of receiving this discount. Right. Yes. Yeah, um, I think it would make sense to pay upfront. And my question is, Mm -hmm. Is the college aligned with any banking institution to assist you in getting a loan? Yes. Well, we partner with GMMB Finance, actually, and they would provide financing for students. But I'll be very upfront. The interest rate is a bit high. It's 15% or something like that, right? And because oh, wow. of that, I mean, we'd be more to, to align, to, to um, give you their contact details. But because of that, most students simply go with their own local banking institution to get the loan funded. 
Okay. Yeah, some bankers on the line. So if you're interested in RBC, you can feel free to reach out to me. <laughs> and you could put your, you could put your, I'll, well, I'll mark you. it for you. You could put your contact details in the chat. So she could, anybody interested, they could reach out to you. That's wonderful. So just for clarification's sake, um, uh, Mr. Johnson, sure. Um, if if I decide to take the option of um paying monthly, we're looking at is it twenty two hundred per month? Well, yes, around twenty two hundred. Yeah, yeah, because it's two thousand okay, plus one twenty five pounds. What what I need to mention as well, guys, is you see the pounds here. The reason why we quote it in pounds is eventually okay. when you need to make those payments, it has to be in the pounds. So you either need to visit your, your bank oh. to get to get like a bank draft mm -hmm. or for them to wire the funds to our first citizens account. But it has to be in the pounds, right? Not the TT equivalent. Okay. Okay, I'm good with that. But again, I am still putting in a plug for the discount because I'm right. really preparing to start in um, between October and November. Yes. Understood. And no, no problem at all. When that time comes, like I okay. mentioned to the sure thing it was, we'd be more than Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, definitely applying now. Then. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No problem. Curtis, you had another question. Yes. Thanks. I'm um, stemming from um, the question from um, Miss Daniel just now. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm also considering um, October, November. Would love to um, benefit from the discount. Um, right. I'm problem with the upfront as an option one. Um, right. So that's. Question one, would I, can I still get that discount if I start October, November? I have no problem right. with during Yeah, before. yeah. So, so like I said before, it's not, not a guarantee because we only budget up to September, right? Mm -hmm. But when that time comes, we'd oh. be more than happy to, to, to facilitate that, that request, depending on if we have it with any budget, you know? So okay. that's why we, we specifically say July or September, right? But I mean, it happens all the time and we are more than flexible to help out students. Right. So when the time comes, we'll be more than happy to see how best we can help you. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, one last yeah. question tied to the to the so let's say option one, uh paying up front. Is it that I have to pay the 30 something thousand up front or can I I'm, can I split that up? No, up front is up front. So you need to pay the eighteen thousand plus the fifteen hundred TT registration and the fifteen hundred pounds up front. So at the start. And then when is the next payment required? Because because the total pay, uh, program payment is basically thirty grand, give or take. Um, well, there's no payment after that, and once you pay these fees up front, that's it. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The math was a bit off. Okay, great. I got yeah. you. Yeah. All right, guys. Any other questions? I'm sure you all have questions, so you could ask it I now. I have a question. Hi. Sure. So if it is I pay the eighteen thousand upfront and the fifteen hundred registration fee, how um mm -hmm. the exam fees can I pay that monthly? Just the exam fees exam? alone? Or... No, it has to be paid upfront in order to get the twelve thousand discount. Okay, but if I pay that upfront, um, mm -hmm. will which discount will I be able to get this semester? If, if you pay what up front, the, there's the TT fees and the registration and the 1500 pounds yeah, the monthly. CTS, right. There's the so, registration fee and the 18, the CTS tuition. Right. So it's not a typical payment option for us, but that's something we need to discuss both with, with management level and see how best we could facilitate you in terms of what discount you'd get, you know? But it's not like a, a structured or fixed amount at this point. It's something we can discuss and we'd be more than happy to be flexible with. with you or any other student looking at it, right? But it won't be the 12,000 discount. It may be a little bit less, right? Hi, Ravi. Um, I have a question. This is Devon here on the line. Um, sure, Devon. If I have my, I have my certificate for my BSc and I could probably get a job letter this week, but the, I know the university will need transcripts, right? Um, right. If, no, if they I don't need transcripts. They don't need a transcript. We need either the certificate or the letter. Oh. Okay, well then, I have no questions then. <laughs> Thanks. Because I had Hi. my transcript from 2018, but, um, you know. Uh, I yeah, know. yeah okay. so that's okay. We don't need a transcript. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm not Hi. sure if I missed this um, earlier. Um, regarding the recognition, where is the, where is the, the university recognized? Is, is it also recognized in Canada? Outside of the UK, is it recognized in Canada as well? 
Yeah, so it's recognized globally, first of all, right? And that's because of the accreditation. It's accredited by the Quality Assurance Agency in the Ukraine. And because of that accreditation, it's recognized globally, including, not, in fact, globally, but it is in Canada as well. We've had students who migrated to Canada with this qualification. They would have gotten jobs based on this qualification as well, right? And I know for a fact they were looking at this qualification because one of the students mentioned one employee went into, they actually pulled up the university and the qualification. He couldn't remember the database, but they actually pulled it up and verified that this was an accredited and recognized program, right? So it is recognized, at least in Canada, for the very least Canada. Hi, um, one more question. It's not recognized in Canada, right? But um, mm -hmm. with one of the MBAs, um, the person who was actually apply to migrate to Canada without um, mostly just like HR or um, hospital management or supply chain. Um, if one you... wasn't one was in health and safety actually. A lot of them were in, a lot of them were in IT and some were in human resource. Those are some that I can remember off the top that I can remember off the top of my head. Hmm? But that's um, not with this university. Um, with Bedfordshire. Yeah, that's what Bedfordshire. That's the specializations that the students did, and that's the areas that they went into when they migrated to Canada. Oh, so they have um, IT and stuff as well? Yeah, we have a specialization in digital technology management. But they actually got their jobs in IT because they had experience in that field as well. It's okay. not only about the qualifications, sometimes the employer might look at the experience that they have as well, you know? All right, and um, so your work experience is basically in security, right? Mm -hmm. um, what MBA would you recommend in terms of for migrating to go with that field? Well, none of the other specializations are really aligned with security. So I might recommend, and this is generally speaking, like a general MBA. Instead of specialization, specializing, you don't specialize, you do a general MBA. Okay, sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have one last question, um, Mr. Johnson. You did sure. mention two general options. Yeah, you, you did mention two general options. I'm I'm not certain if you went into any detail on these well, two the, options. Yeah, the difference with all the specializations, including any general options, is that you have two core units to do, two final projects at the end, and two electives. So for the general MBA option one, these are the two electives under that, right? Corporate innovation and entrepreneurship and project management. And for the next okay. general option three. The two electives would be business economics and international and comparative HR. Right? So that's oh, the, yes, yes. That's the only difference. That. difference. That's yeah. the difference between all the, yeah. all the specializations. Well. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Morning. Hi, morning, Cohen. Yeah, this is Cohen. Yep. My question is, um, do the university recognize UK, other UK level six degrees uh, that is accredited by um, EDUCAL, SQA, and ASTM. I can't say offhand to be quite honest, but if it is a, is a bachelor's degree, right? That certificate that you has, has bachelor's degree on it? Yeah, no, uh, um, postgraduate level six. Oh, it's postgraduate. They yeah. do accept postgraduate, but I'm not sure. And we could try for the very least. Ed, EDUCAL should be recognized. But we mm -hmm. can apply and, and, and see, right? But it should be recognized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll imagine we'll have access to these slides. That's so, um, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to send it. So at the end of this, this okay. meeting, I'm going to send the recording. Right. I'm going to send the slides and all the information that we discussed today, together okay. with the application form and Thank the sample you. job letter. Excuse Thank me. You, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Tell me. Business economics and international and comparative human resources. Yeah. Um, what you said about it before, those two uh, subjects that require an exam? No, these business economics for one of the assignments is to assign two assessments. So one of them is an online exam, right? We actually had students doing that last month. For the other one, and the other one is an assignment. For the other one, International and Comparative HRM, both of them are assignments. Thank you. No problem. Um, so, the pass rate, the, the pass rate, on average, the yeah. business econ was a little bit lower. It was 89, 
right? 89.1 or 89.3 percent, right? That's what he last attended that one day, right? Okay. And part of the reason for that is that a lot of students didn't submit. Uh, two of them didn't show up for the exams, and a lot of them didn't submit assignment to. That kind of affected the pass rate. One question concerning um, the payment plans or payment options. You, right. For the tuition, you'll accept a direct um, online payment or you'll need to come in with... Yeah. No, you don't have to come in. You, we'll give you our first citizen's account number and you could transfer the funds to that account yeah, and, and your email us the receipt funds, answer. So you give funds option. How that works? If I, if I have to do it online, how, how would I... Well, that? you can't do it online, oh. either bank draft or you can okay. ask your bank to wire the funds to our account. But you wouldn't be able okay, to do no. it on online banking. No, no problem. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Alison. Any more questions, guys? I just have one last question, um, Mr. Johnson. Um, the general MBA option one with the project management is what I would be leaning to because I have project management, facilities management background. Could you just go through the um, whether any of them are exam, any of them are relevant to exam, or all our assignment based? No, all of all our assignment based actually. Okay, thanks. All the subjects in the specialization. Okay. Hi, morning. I have one question. Oh, Tamaril? Yeah. Um, for the July intake, what module would we be starting at? Do we start at the core module one, leading and managing? Um, no, actually, for, for that July intake, yes, you're going to the electives. And we have about six different electives being offered in that period. Okay, so um, if I if I were if I was interested them. in the MBA option three, um, which elective would we start with? That business economics with the exam? Uh, you'd be doing international and comparative HR. Okay, okay. Yeah. And in so terms so of the sorry, in terms of the course load, um, is it advisable if you start the MBA um, that you don't do anything else? Any short courses? <laughs> That's completely up to you, but mm -hmm. yes, it is advisable because there's a lot. Um, I wouldn't lie to you at the upfront today, there's a lot of work you need to put in, you know, because a lot of reading, a lot of research in order to understand the content before you could do the assignments. So if you could help it, you know, try to focus on this alone because I'm sure you have a job, you have your family to maintain as well, and you have other commitments. So it would help if you could mm -hmm. minimize the amount of distractions that, that you have, right? Okay, all right, no problem. Thanks. Yeah. Can I right, see no. the general MBA for option two, please? Option two. No, no, there's no option two. We offer there's option one and option three only. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. So, guys, um, here's in terms what. Of, uh -huh. In terms of submitting assignments, Mr. Johnson, it's very strict with the three and the six week deadlines. It's very strict. And if you're a okay. minute beyond the deadline, you get zero. But if, for example, you have a valid reason, you're ill or whatever, you can apply to get an extension. Okay, thanks. No problem. Right, guys, so, so here's what I'll do. I'll end the session now, right? And really, thanks, okay. thanks for your questions and the concern because it tells me that you're actually interested in this and we'll be following up. But if you all have any other questions or queries or concerns, feel free to email me, um, WhatsApp or call, and we'd be happy to, to, to clarify whatever additional questions or queries that you might have, right? Um, in terms yeah, of the costing, I'll send a breakdown of the costing as well and everything else in that email. Good? Yes. Yeah. So let me, let me, that. before I close off, let me thank Kelly as well. I know Kelly was helping us. Kelly is actually one of the staff members here at CTS College. She was helping us in the chat. So thank you very much, Kelly, for your assistance as well. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys, right? So we'll be in contact soon. Good? Great. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. All right, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Bye.